short. I look good tonight, I can't lie. Sunday tea, live in the place. Woo. I got me a guest that you guys are all gonna love. Mr. Counselor's here with me today. You guys need to join in and let's talk the talk. Woo! I look good tonight. Oh my God. Turn Welcome, you guys. Whew. What a day. What a year. Whew. I went to church this morning. It's been a long time since I went and cleansed myself. I kept on getting itches and pains and stuff all over me. So I felt like the devil was cursing me or biting me or something. So I had to go get a little bit of prayer today. And it worked wonders. I insist that everybody go into church and take a break once in a while from the hustle and the bustle. My goodness. Who do we have out there, Jesse? Tell me who we are so I can say good evening. And don't make fun of the way I say it. That's just how it is, my accent. Good evening again. She's going to tell me who's out there. I see all you guys out there. I can't see your face. Oh, hi, Miranda. How you doing? Who else do we got out there? Please tell me. I'm going to bring my guests in shortly, guys, but I just kind of want to talk a little bit before I, I throw them in here on you guys. You guys think you're wolf. He's the one that's the wolf. Love the blonde. Yeah, I know. They say we have more fun. We're going to find out when I get home. Right? Sure. Christopher, how you doing? Okay, Mr. Council, come on in because I really don't have much to say to them. Come on over here. Let's sit together. Uh, look at the love and the heart we're getting. Faith Greaves just joined us. Hi, Faith. How you doing? Um, we have our counselor here, and he's going to give you his name, you guys. I am Giancarlo Carra. I am the counselor for Ward 9 in the city of Calgary. Calgary has one amazing mayor named Nahed Nenshi and 14 city councilors. The city is divided up into 14 wards, and I have the amazing honor of representing Ward 9, which in the 2017 election in October is going to get some big shifts. We're going we're gonna to change the boundaries, and for the first time ever, all of East Calgary, all of Greater Forest Lawn, Inglewood, Ramsey, Dover, Ogden, all of them are going to be part of Ward 9, and I'm super excited about that. So we're having great changes, because I'm actually in Ward 9 myself, mm -hmm. and I do have a business down here, so I mm -hmm. see all the construction mm -hmm. and all the wonderful things going on, and also we're kind of in a multicultural area, so I know a lot of people out there is going to want to know, what are you going to do for us in the multicultural area? area in well, the community. I started working with the communities of Greater Forest Lawn in 2004. I was finishing up my master's in urban design at the University of Calgary, an amazing professor whose entire practice was about getting out of the university, getting out of the ivory tower, and working with people in community. And we were asked by the communities of Greater Forest Lawn to sit down with the community and envision what the best possible future for these amazing neighborhoods could be. And that's really great. Now, with all the construction that's going on right now in this area, you would advise people to start purchasing property in this area because I believe well, I mean, I'm the not, value I is going to go up. Yeah. I want to just educate people because there's a lot of people with property in this area. What we are doing right now as the city of Calgary is we are spending $180 million to give a spectacular face lift, face, face face lift. lift to 17th Avenue Southeast, International Avenue, of course. And not only are we doing that, but that facelift is going to involve a dedicated transit right-of-way. So there's going to be a special lane for buses in both directions with special stations along the way. When you go down to the East Village, I don't know if you've ever been there. Yes, I did. And the East Village was uh, one of the... Uh, it wasn't very nice. No, it was a pretty beat-up part of town, but now we've put in all kinds of beautiful sidewalks, street lights, all of that stuff. We're giving the East Village treatment to International Avenue, and we're building a bridge down the escarpment, over the irrigation canal, over the Deerfoot Trail, over the Bow River, into Inglewood where the truck stop is, and there's going to be a station there. So we're building this beautiful transit way to connect the amazing neighborhoods of Greater Forest Lawn, uh, the communities of Greater Forest Lawn, to the rest of the city, to the downtown, in an unprecedented way. Which is fantastic, because even being here in this business, and I've been here for 11 years, and there's a, there's a bad myth when it comes, when you say the word forest lawn. People don't want to come up here. Women that consider themselves a substance don't want to come up here to do anything. They believe that you're going to get robbed. They believe that everything bad happens up here. Yeah, we've, we've gotten a lot of press 
in a bad press in East Calgary for years, yes. but I think that that's changing. And you know, in 2004, we came into the community as the University of Calgary. We had a team of students and professors, graduate students, undergraduates, postdocs, and we sat down with the communities and we said, well, what's the situation here? Mm -hmm. And then what's the best thing we can do to help? And what we realized is that, you know, there's really three groups of people that call this place home. And it's, it, we don't always understand who they are. The first group were the old townies. Like Forest Lawn used to be a town. Yes, it was. In 1958. Well, the, I wasn't around then. Well, no, but 1958, the winning float in the Calgary Stampede Parade was from the town of Forest Lawn. Wow. And it was a float entitled Forest Lawn, Town of the Future. So it's been around forever. That's yeah. what people don't realize. It was a town long before that, too. And it was outside of town. So if you lived in Forest Lawn, you had to basically walk to the edge of the escarpment, walk down the hill, cross the irrigation canal, cross the Bow River, and then you could catch the streetcar into, into Calgary. Amazing. And so you were always disconnected, right? The other thing is, at the time, it was considered an amazingly ethnically diverse community. And at the time, that meant that like Ukrainian people and Polish people and German people were all living together in the same neighborhood, which isn't diverse by our standards today. <laughs> exactly. Um, but what happened in 61, they decided that you know we need to pave the roads, we need to get off the septic systems and actually have a sewage system. And they said, if we're going to become the town of the future, we have to become part of the city of Calgary. And that was the deal. We paved the roads, they could hook up to the city sewage system, and you could really start to... To, to start making this a more modern place. Um, but it didn't go exactly according to plan, right? Nothing ever does, does it, right? So what happened after that was uh, a couple of things. We put the Deerfoot Trail. Mm -hmm. you know, and so it wasn't just the irrigation canal and the river. There's a huge super freeway splitting, you know, blocking the, the community off. The main street of Forest Lawn became a giant strip mall. And what really was not great was that the social housing of the age, the 1960s and 1970s was a time of building affordable housing and mass numbers and concentrating poverty and concentrating people with legitimate social issues it's, into huge populations. And that's where they throw them is in here. And, and they got, yeah. And they dumped them into Greater Forest Lawn. Right? And so you have the old townies and this new group of impoverished people with social issues. And there was a lot of anger and there was a lot of frustration. And I, but I still, I still believe that we have it to that certain extent because as I watch the neighborhood and as I watch the people that come around, mm -hmm. I think that it's still a little bit like that. Th those groups are still there, right? But there's a third, there's a third chapter of this story. And that is when you started putting a lot of affordable housing, it kept the rents low. And what that meant was that this was an affordable place to live. And Calgary started to experience immigration from around the world. world. You know, we exactly. used to be white. We used to be really white. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people from, from all over everywhere. the world started to come and live in Calgary. And International Avenue was the kind of place where they could afford to live. So can we, can we elaborate on International yeah. Avenue? Because a lot of people don't understand what it means. And a lot of culture don't realize that there's a, a place down on this strip here where there's flags. Yep. And there's all kinds of nationality of flags down there. Mm -hmm. Can we give one second? Is there any questions? Anybody talking to us? Nothing yet. All okay. Right. I hope I'm not boring everybody. No, no, you have. There's a lot of people out there. They're listening because nice. they need to be informed, right? All right. So, I mean, so what happened was in the 70s, the 60s, and the 70s, and into about 1980, we put a lot of affordable housing in, and then after that, the international immigration started to happen here, and that's really the third group of people, and it's not one group. It's just lots of different people from all over the world. Oh, wow. Right, and, and if you look actually, if, if you were to sort of do a pie chart of the ethnic origins of Calgarians today. It's huge. It's huge, it's a pinwheel. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a multicolored it's pinwheel, right? That's what it is. But you go anywhere else in the city, and there's a couple of big slices of pie. You know, East Indian people live with East Indian people up in the, the Chinese congregate along the North Central Corridor. Uh, you know, white people stick to their own. And you start to sort of, we're, we're, Mayor Nenshi in 2010, when I was running for council and he was running for mayor, I had this great neighborhood speech and he had a speech that talked about, you know, our future as a, as a people. And he was really concerned that we were sort of becoming a city of enclaves and ghettos. And we were segregated, We right? were segregating ourselves, right? And International Avenue is the only place in the city of Calgary where the pie chart of the people living in the neighborhood reflects the pie chart of the whole city. 
And that's a huge strength. It is because people from the South won't come into the, into the Southeast. People from the North will not come down here to shop. They have a myth that it's a bad place. Yeah, there's, I mean, you know, it, it, it was, it, all of East Calgary was down and out for a long time. Like my mom was born and raised in Inglewood. She graduated from Western Canada High School in And that's on 17th Avenue, right? Well, well that, that was her school, right? Okay. It was a smaller place. But she, she grew up in a small house in the bottomlands of Inglewood, the part of Inglewood that was called East Calgary. Now we think of all of this as East Calgary. But, you know, that was a down and out place. When I was, when I was rolling around on my banana seat bike growing up in the summers with all mm -hmm. the kids in Inglewood, we told ourselves that, that Inglewood was a dump because it was the kind of place that the city abandoned. And you know what? This isn't a place that the city abandoned. That's a false myth. That's a false story. This is a place where people come and they, uh, you know, establish businesses and they do well with those businesses and, and they move to neighborhoods around here. And what we want to do is we want to create an environment where people stay, they, they keep their businesses and they live here too. Which is good because, I mean, I've been here for 11 years and I'm going to be honest, I've never been broken into. Nothing bad has ever happened down here in Forest Lawn. Yeah, I, Look, I, I think the, the, the days of crime, like we're, we're living in a safer place than Calgary's safer than it's ever been, right? We've got a couple of, we've got some crime wave with the fentanyl right now, a little bit of the downturn. Oh, fentanyl. The what, tell me a little bit about the fentanyl. Whoa. Well, I mean, what are you going to say? There's a serious crisis going on right but now. But right, it's, it's funny that you brought that up. We're getting um, a pharmacist and a doctor's office next door. Mm -hmm. I actually went to court with the landlord for the same thing. And when I was there, the the BRZ. Yep, your business revitalization zone. It's now being called the business improvement area. Yeah. But Allison Cream McSweeney, who's they the executive voted director. against. They voted against it though, yeah. because they believe that we have a meth problem. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I think that this is a part. Yeah. They're yeah. saying that that's where they put most in in the poor area. That is where they put that stuff. Now, they're saying back in the Northwest or the mm -hmm. Southwest, they would not put a clinic of that sort in there. Well, you know, I think we have to start having a serious conversation. People are dying from fentanyl every day in droves. This is a massive, massive issue, and we have to be able to address it, right? And I'm, I'm sort of of the opinion that, you know, if finding a way to get people, you know, in a safe clinical environment where they're not going to OD, where they're not going to die. And when they're ODing, they're dangerous because the thing about fentanyl, especially car fentanyl, is a single grain of that. If you touch it, it'll get into your bloodstream and you could OD. Like our, 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 wow. our fire department, our police department, they carry the OD kits now and they're, they're saving their own lives when they go in to save someone else's lives and all of a sudden one of them starts ODing on this stuff. It is freaky strong. Oh my goodness. So, so what do we... What? How can we help? What can we do? Well, I think we have to sort of understand that these, these people who are addicts are, are, are in serious trouble. And rather than treating like, them like criminals, like we have, animals to, we have like to treat them like they're sick, sick, and we have to create clinical environments where they can survive. I think in a place like Greater Forest Lawn, which has you know, way too many pawn shops, way too many like, money lending stores, higher percentage of, 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 of liquor stores and stuff like that, we have to we have to put in a lot of other things. We have to yes. we have to we have to have every neighborhood every every great neighbor. I mean, my whole platform at City Hall is called Great Neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and it's based on the idea that great neighborhoods make a great city. And what makes a neighborhood great is that you've got places for rich and poor, young and old, people of all ages, stages, and wages can live in a community and and be different, but also work together. Absolutely. And uh, you know, there's no other place in the city that has the has the ability to model that than East Calgary. And so when I, when we worked with the communities of Greater Forest Lawn in 2004, we said, look, you guys acknowledged 10 years ago that this is an international avenue and that's a great strength. Mm -hmm. You know, the old townies, get over yourselves, right? You know, things have happened. You're not the town of the future. You're a totally different place than you ever imagined you were gonna be. And that's okay, right? You know, we have to make sure that we celebrate our diversity. We have to make sure that all of the amazing businesses that, you know, there's so much entrepreneurialism in these neighborhoods. There is a lot here, but they're not get they're not getting the respect that they should get. There's a longevity here. There's um, a barber shop next door to us, Brother Scott. He's been there for 24 years. Yeah. I've been here for 11 years. The restaurant, uh, East Indian restaurant, Skylark. They, yeah, Skylark. They're They've been there forever. Yeah. 
but we're not getting that uh, respect for the longevity, right? Well, I, look, I have a lot of respect for that, and I think the rest of the city is going to come along. Like when I grew up, Inglewood was down and out. When I, you know, when I moved to Calgary full time from New York City, my mom moved to New York. I was born in New York, and we spent our summers out here. And then when it came time for me to go to university, I came here, and I've been here ever since. And in 1990, Inglewood was still a down and out place. Yeah, that is true. Right? It wasn't very. Where's nice. it now? Right now, our challenge is how do we keep it affordable in a better place? And we want to make sure that we're having. I want to be in a position where we're having the same conversation in Greater Forest Lawn. I think too many rich people, too many poor people, too many of any kind of people. It's not great for a neighborhood. What you really want to do is you want to create these amazing melting. And I, I come from New York, so I use the term melting pot. But you know, we're yes. a pluralistic society. There's no other country in the world that has succeeded in pluralism like Canada has. Canada has. And you look at what's happening around the rest of the world, we're so lucky to be here. We are. We are. It's, 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 it's crazy what's going on. I think the Bible said it's almost the end, but well, I, we, we need to just kind of live good and hope for the best, right? But I think that we're going to, it's, it's all about creating strong community. It's all about working together. So what we discovered when we worked with, with Greater Forest Lawn is that there hadn't been a new build of anything on the avenue since like 1980. There's one or two exceptions. Mm -hmm. But the whole avenue, they haven't, we haven't built a new home out here since like 1980. We built some Wow, of, that's right? amazing. And, and it's time to have a conversation about how we build out. And if you're gonna build out, you have to start investing in the corridor. So we, we came up with two big strategies for International Avenue. The first one was understanding that we're part of this big corridor that stretches from the downtown and the East Village through Inglewood and Ramsey, all along the communities of Greater Forest Lawn, and then out into the countryside and out to Chestermere. And along that corridor, which is pretty short, you know, considering yeah, yeah. how sprawling, you ran high quality transit and you created vibrant neighborhoods along along every step of the way, you'd, you'd build an amazing place. Absolutely, and it's gonna boost um, business, it's gonna boost, it's just gonna boost safety and everything that people think that's not around here. And it is around here. What I'm worried about though is the construction because yeah, let, it has... Let, let, let's talk about business interruption. Yes. Right. That's, and what can we do to be... Can, can we can we get back to that in one minute? I just Absolutely. Want to say, okay. you know, there's the big corridor. And then the other thing was the idea that International Avenue could be the best high street for the city and an incredible main street for the communities, the neighborhoods that are along the way. Mm -hmm. right? And so we envisioned a redo of the avenue in 2004 as a multimodal grand boulevard that we could be proud of. And we won an international award in urban design for that work. And the city over the next couple of years sort of put that into policy. And in 2010, when I was elected, the mayor and myself, the councilor from out here, Andre Chabot, started to working on the rest of council saying, it's time to put our money where our mouth is and actually put money on the table. And we've set aside now $180 million. We just started breaking ground. We're doing a lot of work in Inglewood too. Like when I yes, when I got that. elected, I was like, I'm gonna do all of these things. And I had a big list of things I wanted to do. Reinvesting in these neighborhoods for the first time in generations. And we've been so successful in doing that that now I've got the opposite project. Now I've got the opposite problem where people are like, This is a real pain in my ass. Yes, we're, it is. we're tearing up the roads. You're tearing up we everything got, yeah, down here. Yeah, it and, is a pain. And, and you know what? I've been told by Inglewood merchants, because we're doing a lot of work on the main street there too, they said, you know, who cares if you have a beautiful street in two years if there isn't a single business left, left open? Them. Absolutely. You know, and that's something that we are extremely cognizant of as a city. And, you know, we had, we've had some disastrous sort of first cuts at this. If you go down to Chinook Center, there's that 61st Avenue that connects the, the C train station to the mall. Yes. We yes. just did some work along there. And to be frank, we did not get it right in terms of working with the businesses along there. So what are you guys gonna do now though? That's, well, I'm... so take two, this, our second kick at, at, at the can okay. was on 17th Avenue Southwest, the old Red Mile. And they're doing a bit, a lot of work along there. And you know, we've stopped, we've sat down, we've got, we've got people now, who, project managers who instead of being distant people, are working out of the avenue. They're walking up and down the street. They're getting to know the business owners, and we're bringing that kind of thinking to this work too. You've got an amazing business revitalization zone. Allison Cree McSweeney has been fighting for this avenue for 20 years. She's run her business organization like a community development organization, and she's a great point person. But is there anything that the city can do to help the business owners? 
Well, I mean, is there anything yeah. offered for them, like? For them to be able to hold on, because I mean the economy is kind of on a yeah. spritz, yeah. and then to have the the, the traffic and, and everything digging up outside, what can they do for the business owner? Well, what we want to do is we want to make sure that international it's known that International Avenue is open for business. We want to make sure that people can still get in and out mm -hmm. to your business. I mean, we're not going to close, and if anyone closes a driveway or or, or blocks you off, you get on the phone immediately with Allison. You get on the phone immediately with me, and we'll have that fixed. Instantly. What about lost of um, business? Well, you know, who, who, that that's a tough one, right? Like, I mean, we've got a downturn in the economy, so mm -hmm. who's to say it's the construction of the downturn in the economy? It's What we want to do is we want to make sure we are sending out the message that International Army is open for business. We're taking this construction period to talk about the future and be excited about it and encourage people to come down. That's part of the reason why I'm on the show. How long do you think, it, it, how long is this plan for International Avenue? How long do you think it'll be? It will be done fully high quality completed by the end of 2018 and it's going to go i guess it's not that long but you know, we're, we'll we're say it, we're doing it as fast as we <laughs> can right and the other thing is we're going to be completely open and learning as we go so you know on 17th we're going to take we're going to take a break because okay. what happens is when we just continue to blah 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 people get they hate us and they, they get really sorry. pissed off and we don't answer them we need to thank them so, so can you do that i have a question for you it's on your whatsapp it's a very good question, but I can't get into it. Oh, okay. All right. Can you, um, okay, can you read some of the question? Maybe he can answer some while I look for what I'm looking for, which I don't know what I'm looking for, but. He had a question come from an individual on WhatsApp. Very good question. Couldn't get to it in time. This is not my WhatsApp. My WhatsApp is on my other phone. Oh. Do you know what the question is? No, I can't get to it. It's okay. We'll answer it after. I'm sure it's already we'll been We'll get answered. to this. But we'll get to it after. I can't. I don't have that phone in my hand anyway. Sorry, guys. So we had uh, Miranda join us. Christopher and hey. Faith. Candy. Candy. Hi, Candy. How are you? All right. We had Vera. Hi, Baron. How are you? Hi, Cuban. How are you? Hi, Jamaica. How are you? I see Dave. Uh, put, come back down. It's uh, Deshi. Debishi. I don't, can't pronounce Debisha. your name. Debisha is in Jamaica. And Debisha works, Debisha is with um, the bobsled team. She's one of the bobsled girl. And I had them on the show. Hi, you're back in Jamaica. You guys don't come back till, um. Well, hopefully we, hopefully we throw the Olympics here in 2026 so you can come up and compete. Yeah, I have them all here. So that's one of them watching That's us. awesome. Who's that? Sincere, hi, that's my daughter. Where do I look, by the way? I'm like, feeling like <laughs> right there, okay. <laughs> um. Joan Peter. Hi, how are you, sweetheart? Aww. Hey, Mom. Hi, honey. Who else do we have up there? Uh, Joanne says, love, love the blonde. The it totally blonde. works. It totally works. It totally works. The blonde totally White works. White people so don't stick to their own. We are so multicultural. Do you want to take that? <laughs> I don't know what that... Well, I mean, look, I grew up in New York City, right? And uh, I went to public school there. And... What I've noticed is when I first came here in 1990, I couldn't believe how white the city was. And now when I go into the schools and when I go into the public schools and I work with kids, it's a lot more like the schools I grew up in in New York. So this, this city has really become diverse in a fairly short period of time. And I think it's awesome. I think it's one of our greatest strengths, especially when you look at what's happening in the rest of the world right now. People are getting afraid. They're, getting, they're falling back into sort of, you know, fear of others. I'm listening to you. I'm not, it's not that I'm not listening no, 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 to you. I'm no, trying no. to read at the no, no, same okay. time. Joan says, as a white woman, I have very few white friends. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, it's, it's, a not, it's, it's a, a choice. It's a choice. If you want to have white friends, you have white friends. If you want to have black friends, you have black friends. Just make sure you have good friends. Just make sure you have good friends. I don't think the color matters, but thank you very much for that question. And Miranda said, Airdrie from, hi, I, I know Miranda from Airdrie, go or I Ask her, everyone's You're joining joined from Jamaica, so great. You've got international reach with this yes. show, eh? Um, Dania, uh, Andrew Johnson, I know you're in New York. How you doing, baby? That's my hometown. Where in New York is Andre? And, Andrew, where, where in New York are you from? Danelia is from Calgary. Um, Andrew will come back on in a minute. I don't, Sh Shaveen Douglas. Hi, Bridget. Bridget Cunningham. Kevin, is that your, you related to Bridget Cunningham? No. Hi, okay. Jackie. How are you doing? <laughs> ID Supriya, how you doing? We're up to date. Right. Okay, so I said thank you guys very, very much for <coughs> Thanks joining Thanks for watching, me. everyone. Yes, every Sunday. We'll go back to the conversation. Okay. But they kind of get, they get upset when we don't acknowledge yeah, well, them, we so gotta, we just yeah. did. 
I'm so where were we? We were at. We're at. What do we do with the businesses, right? So I mean, I guess, I guess, my question is, where are you hurting, and how can we minimize the impact of construction? We got to be fast. We got to keep things open. We got to, we got to keep people coming in here, mm -hmm. and that's the mission, right? And and uh, that's part of the reason why I'm on the show because I want to get everyone to know that we are still open for business on International Avenue and Inglewood and 17th Avenue Southwest. These are some of the best places in the city. And we're only going to make them better. And there's a lot of good people in this area because they bought their homes, they've paid for their homes. They've been here for a million years. Do you know that we have over 500 home-based businesses in Greater Forest Lawn? There's wow, a that's huge, amazing. Huge amount of entrepreneurs. And a lot of people don't know that. So, I mean, you're here to share. Do you have anything else to share? Again, you guys, I thank you so very, very much. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I thank you so, so very much for joining me every Sunday. Thank you very much, you guys. Let's continue to go back on. I have to suck up, you guys. What's the WhatsApp question? I, I, I got to answer this. Okay, the WhatsApp question. That, well, you give me my phone. I will go on WhatsApp. Okay, so we're going to shut down Sunday tea. Oh. You got to shut down Sunday tea oh. to get the WhatsApp question. It's actually a really good question. Wait, you, wait, Faith, what changes will you focus on if you elect, if you're elected to Ward 9? Um, Faith, put the question on Facebook, please. Facebook. Okay. What changes will I focus on? Okay, yes. so let's just talk about... So, my let's look in the camera okay. and tell them what, uh, what you, you're focusing on. Okay, so when I was elected in 2010, my platform was and remains a... Called, it's called Great Neighborhoods, and it's based on the idea that great neighborhoods make a great city. And there's five transformations that I'm pursuing at City Hall and in our communities surrounding the idea of great neighbors. And the first one is that if great neighborhoods make a great city, let's organize ourselves around that. Rather than expect great neighborhoods to happen as something that sort of, you know, is just a side effect of business as usual, let's make that our business. Let's change how we plan, let's change how we organize ourselves as a city, and let's focus on that. And council has done a lot of work saying, you know, a city of inspiring neighborhoods is a huge focus of ours. Number two, and I mean, I come from a planning background. You know, I did my schooling in planning, and all of the planning that we have inherited, all of the bureaucrats at City Hall that we've inherited, what they do is they put cul-de-sacs on farmer's fields. Mm -hmm. You know, they just grow a city that spreads out and spreads out. Now we have to get back to the idea of building a city that grows up rather than spreads out. So transforming how we plan and grow our city is number one. Number two, equally important, is the idea that neighborhoods are not just the people who live there. They're the people who live there, they're the businesses that operate there. They're everything. They're the, the institutions children. that operate there, right? The schools, the churches, the, churches. the you know the, the doctor's office, the pharmacist, right. everything that is here makes up the community. Right. And and so rather than say, you know, it's just the residents who live here that that should that should decide what happens. Everyone who makes the neighborhood should be able to sit down, talk about where they come from, talk about where they're at, and most importantly, talk about where they're going. Something I tell my constituents all the time is the only thing that you can absolutely be guaranteed is that your neighborhood's going to change. You can react to that change, you can engage in the fool's errand of trying to stop that change, or you can sit down with your neighbors and talk about the kind of place you want to become and work together to, to make that happen. So we're working to actually empower communities to have those conversations and drive and be the change they want to be. Number three, we've got 15,000 people that work for the city of Calgary. And That's rather, a lot. Yeah, rather than have, and we're, 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 managing, we're managing our retirements, we're managing our vacancies in this downturn in the economy. We're not putting people, we're not, we're not handing out pink slips, but we're making sure we're, we're very responsible and we're making sure that people stay employed. But I, what I want to focus on is I don't want our city workers to be bureaucrats that live in cubicles far away from us. I don't want them to be bureaucrats. I want them to be civil servants. I want them to be teams of people working in the neighborhood for the community. And we're seeing that as we build International Avenue. We've got our project managers. We've got, they are working with the neighbors. They're working with the business association. They're part of the neighborhood. Can you also 
um, explain to a lot of people or explain to the people out there that are here in Calgary and that do live in Forest Lawn or that lives in Calgary what the BRZ is a lot of people aren't aware what it is I won um, an award from them in 2008 best right. business award that's awesome so a lot of people don't know what it is so okay. can you elaborate yeah, on so, it uh, and uh, they can get information from yeah, these people uh, as well a BRZ stands for business revitalization zone the, we're just changing the name because of provincial legislation to BIA, which stands for Business Improvement, Improvement Area. What these are, these are organizations where people who own businesses along a main street basically pay a special tax above and beyond all their regular taxes. And that tax goes into a kitty, and then they duly elect a board of governors from amongst themselves, and then they decide how they want to spend that money to put flowers up to throw festivals, to do things like that. And so you are a rate payer in the International Avenue mm -hmm. BRZ, so you pay a little bit extra and that money funds the salaries of the people who work for the B BRZ, funds the people who, who water the, the flowers that you put out along the avenue, clean the graffiti, do things like that, run the stampede breakfast and the other, and, and do other work. And it was actually the BRZ that were, was instrumental in 2004 in saying, why don't you guys come from the university and work with us to envision a better future Absolutely. for this avenue. It's taken us over 10 years, and now we're spending money and we're making that vision a reality. And so that's fantastic, because that. I think um, Horse Law needs it, International Avenue needs it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great business people here that's had their business for a very, very long time. So much longevity. And we want, to, we want to keep them here. I want to keep me here, you know what I mean? Look, this place is only going to get cooler and cooler and cooler. There might be a point in time when there's a great building that comes up across the street and you move over there and this place gets turned over and so that, how we sort of do that juggling, that's going to be an exciting conversation yes, we have is. over the next couple and, of years. And you're going to be back again because as we go and as you go further into your counseling, no. I, I'm going to pull you in to get more information. I will information. always come and talk with you. I mean, if, if I'm not boring everybody, then. No, you're not. We go up to 10, we go up to 15, we come down, we go up. You know, we're, you're not boring anyone. We're going to take a break for a minute here, and I would like to, you know what, I'm going to let the counselor read this. I am wearing a fantastic dress tonight from, tell them, tell them where the dress is from. A La Parisienne on Memorial Drive, and the manager's Helen, Helene Toge. Absolutely. And you guys, this store is available in Minute. Marlboro Mall. Now take a look at this dress. You guys can go and get one. This one is a medium. No, it's not a large. And here we go. You guys, please go and check him out. It's fantastic. Here we go. He has all kind of wonderful things. And as I talk in the show, whether it's Island Tea, Sunday Tea, or whether it's my food show, I will be wearing their dresses. Ah, they sponsored me, and it's such a nice dress. Thank you. So we have eight people out there. They're coming up, going down, coming up, you guys. Beautiful. Thank you, Didi. Tell us what you guys want to hear. Ask us some questions. Share the video so everybody else can get the information because the information is needed, you guys. Do we have any more questions out there so we can continue to talk? Maybe we'll get into some joke or something, you know. We're kind of stiff in here. I'm sorry. I'm so stiff. Well, don't be stiff. You Listen know, up. Say, the other two things we're pursuing with Great Neighborhoods is just... We're being a lot more fiscally responsible about how we grow this city. A city that sprawls out where it doesn't pay for itself. It's not great socially, and it's not great environmentally. And then the final thing is we're becoming a government by, of, and for the people. We're rebalancing roles and responsibilities with the province, and that sounds super boring, but it's super so important, It's a good too. thing. Hi, Amanda. How you doing? Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining in, you guys. You're just joining in. We're, we're sitting here with Counselor. Please tell them, Counselor, what? John Carlo Carra. You're going to have to get that. John. Okay. Here. John. Here, wait, wait. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, tell them what this is. Tell them why you're doing that. And I'll do it. Okay. Hear us about the question. Althea has an amazing, uh, it's, it's eucalyptus and cloves. Yes. And it's just very calming. So if we get nervous because of all the pressure. That you put us under, we are. Um, so Althea, your bracelet comes from Young Living Essential Oils. Young Living Oils. Essential oils. Uh, Ooh, the distributor is out of so Edmonton. Sexy. Her name is Laura, and she uh, gifted me several of them for my family. And I'm offering, I, I give them, I give things away. But it's um, it's saturated with eucalyptus and cloves and lavender uh, to I help. Think they're, for, they're, for they're hearing you. So it has all kind of good stuff. And honestly, you guys, it does make me relax. I mean, look at my face. If I get me more relaxed, I'm gonna go to sleep. 
Um, Michelle said, hi, Althea, and say hello. She's saying hi to you. Hello, Michelle. And Faith said something about... Good curious question. about the questions. What are you curious about? What's the question? What question are you curious about? Faith, Ask your questions again for us, Faith. Ask those questions again. Ask them again, please, Faith. So what is upcoming for the neighborhood besides the expansion and construction? What's going on there? What's upcoming? Well, I mean, there's a number of exciting things happening in the community. We are, of course, spending $180 million on the avenue. I've been working since 2004 with the International Avenue Arts and Culture Center. They're now called The Arch. And we're looking to find a place to put them. And we're having some exciting conversations about some of the community halls that aren't as well used around the avenue. We've got the Twin Views Arena over in Aaron Woods that needs a facelift. And we're bringing some, some resources to that. So I arts, culture, recreation, and great urbanism. Okay. That's the mission. I think, yeah. Okay, so I think that's what she... I don't know... I don't, Faith, I don't know if you're, you're trying to elaborate. I, I don't know if you want to know about what they're doing for the people because I feel that's kind of what you you want to hear. I think that's what the question well, is. What are we doing for the multicultural the, the, people in the area? The other thing that we're doing is uh, we've been working with the BRZ, the Business Revitalization Zone. We just got a grant from the province to really uh, do business development and explore the entrepreneurialism here in, in the neighborhood and really sort of get people from working in their homes to making the businesses more permanent and taking them out onto the street. And there's there's so much entrepreneurialism in this community. We're working with Momentum over by the Franklin Station, teaching people uh, business skills. And uh, it's, it, you know, it's really exciting that your BRZ has not just been focused on street fairs and mm -hmm. not just focused on flowers. They've also been focused on real community development there and they continue to do that work and it's inspiring. So yeah, Raquel says uh, she wants to get one of those dresses uh, so sincere says you look gorgeous. She's excited and happy. Thank you, my uh, daughter. Sincere is my daughter, and she just keeps throwing it in there because she wants me to acknowledge her. And honey, I am a knock and not acknowledging you, my sweetheart. Thank you very much, and thank you for saying that I look wonderful. Because I went to church today, and I, it made me feel really good. Um, Michelle said, she's, she's "Commenting, that's a wonderful thing that we're getting done finally." Yeah, things are finally getting done, Michelle, and I feel so proud to have been working with the communities this long and to actually see it happening. Because it took Forest Lawn a very, very long time for, for us to get any kind of action. It didn't seem like nothing would ever get done here. No, and you know what, we've got an East Calgary boy mayor, you've got a lot of East Calgary power on city council now, and rather than spend our money spreading out, we're starting to refocus on the neighborhoods that matter, and, and that's that, what you're seeing. And that's what we need, we need to have changes done. A lot of not doing too much talk, 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 so and the, not, the, no action. The other thing, though, right, is business interruption's a real thing, right? And, yes. you know, and a husband and wife will get divorced if they renovate their house and it goes south, right? That is true. And I don't want to get divorced. I don't want to get divorced <laughs> either. I want, I want this to work out. I want it to work out. And I think just constant communication. We've got a city that's absolutely aware that... Uh, making the businesses work is important. Can we write, can you take that card for me, sweetie, and you can write that in and tell them where they can go to get the dress, hon? Thank you. Okay. Sorry. No, it's all good. And then I, I just say, uh, you know, communication's really important and just making the rest of the city realize, look, I think in no time, in really no There's time, we're going to be in the same situation that Englewood's in, where it goes from a down and out place. I hope so. To a place where we're really worried about keeping it affordable. I hope and so. And we have to, we have to keep, focused on that one more question for me if you yeah. guys uplift this area isn't the rent gonna go skyrocket I mean it's gonna be hard to get a place in this area every time you guys come into into a, a place and lift it up because then everything changes the value just becomes insane yeah. and and what we got what we have to make sure is that as the rents go up they're going up because it's a realistic reflection of how much business you're doing Right. Well, I don't know about all of that, but well, I, I, I just hope that they don't try to kill us after they decide to uh, revamp um, International Avenue, right? Well, I agree. But I mean, what somebody does it say? has a question. Will for there you? be a subsidy for business development? Well, we are, uh, there's not going to be a direct subsidy to businesses, but we are doing a lot of work through the, uh, with the NDP government mm -hmm. and with your amazing business revitalization zone, Allison Cree McSweeney, about and with Momentum and with a bunch of other organizations about how we can 
you know, take the entrepreneurial spirit that's here and just translate it into more and more business success. There's another question, but before you go on that, can we elaborate a little bit on momentum? Momentum. Yeah. Because there's a lot of information that's given in there for a lot of people, especially newcomers or people. As a matter of fact, I went up there the other day and they were offering um, courses. Mm -hmm. You know, so can we elaborate for some people that don't know where to go, want to change over to a new career, or what they can do? Well, I mean, I know about momentum because you know Jeff Loomis is the is the guy who's running it right now. I went to school with him; he's an amazing guy. My cousin Jenny is works for them, so I've, I've got deep ties. And to I took, that a, I took a little yeah. tiny um, business course there. Yeah. It wasn't a long. Was it one. helpful or not? It. To, to a certain extent it was, but I mean, I wouldn't say 100%, but it did help me, okay. right? Because it got me into the right direction to put myself into university to get the information that I really needed. So I ended up in DeVry Institute of Technology. Awesome. Um, what was the question Faith has? Uh, will there be a subsidy for business development? And again, not directly for businesses. We want businesses to succeed on their own, but we want to create an environment where they can succeed. After changes are complete, what is the projected recovery for local businesses? Well, I'm hoping that uh, there's not going to be a lot of uh, interrupted business, and we're going to make sure that people can all the time access your businesses and get in and get out. And when we do have to shut down a road, we'll do it, you know, in the middle of the night. We'll do it like late on a Sunday. Uh, how will you work at with at the home at with the at home entrepreneurs to be on the avenue? Well, I'll tell you, you know, we're just over by uh, 50th Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a work with that area when they brought the Sobies in. And what we suggested is that, you know, right now, Sobeys backs onto 50th Street. And it's a little bit of a crime prevention through environmental design disaster. You've got this entire blank wall for a whole block. Yes. And it's six feet, it's six meters deep, uh, of, so 20 feet deep of grass that they have to mow. And what we're saying is, you know what you could do? You could put little stop shop fronts there with affordable units above, and people could live upstairs affordably and they could incubate their businesses in, in the live mm -hmm. workspace, you know? And there's there's all kinds of things like that that we've been involved in. There was another question before you went up. It just anyway. says D was a, a good question from Faith. Yeah. A business have been struggling from Jessica. We know that currently businesses are struggling now regardless of the economy. Yeah, and this is something that's happening throughout the city because of the economy. I guess the big question is, you know, I, I, I believe that, you know, that Tough times don't last, but tough people do, do right? Uh, and these Calgarians are tough people, so, and these are businesses that have been around through boom-bust cycles before. Can we... Is and there, the future's bright now. Well, is there anything that we can tell people out there that are going through a hard time? That Do we see anything new coming? Is, it, is the oil price going up? Is there anything else that Alberta is trying to invest in to open up more doors for jobs and businesses? Well, as you know, I mean, this downturn in the economy and the downturn in oil and gas is... is is a structural change, right? You know, in our oil and gas companies, uh, they got lazy, and they were very, they, they, they didn't control costs, and you know, like, there was just a, there was, I think it was Suncor just released its quarterly earnings, and they made like a billion dollars, right? So I don't think that the oil and gas uh, business is gonna employ the same numbers of people, even as the price of oil goes up. They're gonna, they're gonna bring people on to, to build the pipelines, but I think on a move forward basis, it's going to be a smaller part of the employment. And what we have in Calgary is we have a very educated workforce. We have a very desirable quality of life. We're Canadians, we celebrate our diversity. And people all over the world aspire to be there, envy that. And I think, you know, Justin Trudeau said the world needs more Canada. I believe that's true. It I is believe, true. It is I a believe, good place. I believe people need mm. more Calgarians. Yeah. And so I, I am very bullish about the future of this city. I don't think we're a one-trick pony. I think we are a diverse, amazing place, and we're over the hump in terms of being yeah. a, a one-trick pony. I, I, think, I think we just got so comfortable mm -hmm. in ourselves in Alberta, and I think this is a wake-up call for us to do other investment instead of just segregate ourselves into one, yeah. in one thing, totally which agree. was oil and gas. Now we have a chance to look at different different entity so that we won't fall back into this situation again again you guys i would love to thank my guest he was fantastic very fantastic to have you oh <laughs> i was looking at him because i'm talking to him but i thank i thank you so so much for coming here and educate people 
Is there more questions? Because I see more people coming on. And yeah, we have to thank you so much for joining us. We just had some more joining on. Marlon, Sheena, uh, what is it? Fearon came back. Yolanda, Adela. 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 <laughs> Butchering names. Yeah, yeah, so Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. How are you doing? We're going to time or so. We're going to say goodbye. Not okay. just a second, but you're going to take the time to give them a thought. And then I'm going to give them a thought. And then we'll go out. So they obviously enjoy this. Most people don't like to watch or listen to anything to do with anything. And tonight, we continue to get people higher and lower. So they're enjoying the conversation with us tonight. So you didn't bore them. You didn't bore them. <laughs> so we're going to give you your thoughts. Well, I, I mean, I think a great city is made out of great neighborhoods. And my work at City Hall, my work with the City Council, with our amazing mayor, is really about focusing on that. So I think that great neighborhoods, you know, same reason why design shows and cooking shows are so popular on TV is because people care about those things. They love food. People care about their food. They care about where they live. And your neighborhood is really where we all live and together. People care about what's going in their yeah. body. So we care about where we're living. Safe. We want to be safe. We want to be able to walk outside. We and want we, to be healthy. We want to move. We right? want to dance. <laughs> right? So, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative that so many people watched. I, I, I encourage you to get involved with your community. And I think East Calgary, the future is so bright. So thank you so much. And thank you for all the work you do. I thank I you. I think you're amazing. Thank you. I think you're great, too. I love having you. And you didn't even make me nervous. You just made me feel loose and good. I shouldn't have used that word, loose, right? No. <laughs> no? Okay, he made me feel calm. Thank it you. Could have been more my, calm. It could have been my... Yeah, it could have been my beads. Or it could have been... I don't know what it was. You guys keep coming up. But we got to go. We're gonna. I'm going to take you guys out with the music. Maybe he'll sit here and shake with me, okay? Turn it on. Here we go. It's always nice to have you. I thank you guys so, so very much. That's not great. Oh, that's not good. But I thank you guys. We have 14 of you guys coming on. You guys keep coming on more and more. I really do appreciate the support on a continual basis, you guys. I love you. I can't stay all night. And if we go past an hour or even 30 minutes, you guys ain't going to watch this anyways. Please share the video so everybody can be informed. Share, 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 and share. Tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend. Here we go. We're going to go out. Ready? You going to dance with me? There we go. Sunday T, look at him. He's like really cool. Like, look at him. <laughs> Hey,